So this morning, about 7.15 a.m., JFRD received a call from the SAF battery company that's behind me down here. Uh, it, uh, it came in as a commercial alarm. Upon the uh, crew's initial arrival, they found that we had a runaway lith-ion phosphate battery. Now, this is a big battery. It's like 5 foot by 5 foot by about 2 foot tall. Um, initial crews uh, attempted to attack that battery fire with dry chemical and lithex fire extinguishers. They were not successful, and the determination was made for uh, crew safety to pull them out and reassess the situation. Uh, we have since set up a two and a half inch monitor nozzle to cool the batteries that are around the other batteries that are around this one battery that's continuing to burn now. Uh, they also, our crews went in and moved all of the the uh, batteries that were closest to the affected battery back to try to keep them from uh, igniting uh, and causing uh, additional problems. This fire continues to burn um, and it's going to continue to burn for hours. Uh, it puts off some pretty dangerous, uh, some pretty dangerous gas. Uh, hydrogen fluoride is one of the gases it's putting off. When it goes out, it puts off hydrogen, which is extremely explosive. So we'll be remaining on scene uh, for a extended period of time. We've got a planning meeting uh, set up in the next hour or so to try to figure out how long we're going to be here and what our course of action is going to be. But we're going to be on scene for an extended period of time. I have with me uh, Chief Mike Lesniak. He's our Deputy Division Chief of Operations who's actually been inside the building and can answer any questions you may have. What is the danger right now to uh, anybody in proximity to the building? So there's no, there's no danger to anybody in proximity of the building. We currently, we have both of our hazmat teams out here. They've got air monitoring set up around to make sure that the air is good and what, the water runoff from that two and a half that's keeping the other batteries cool. We've tested and there's nothing in that water. What protocol has been uh, followed to, to make sure that everybody who was in the building is like okay health-wise? So we have, we have uh, seven rescues that are on scene that are uh, taking care of rehab and also evaluating our folks and making sure they're in a, you know, a good place. We also decon everybody that comes out of that building before they come out of their gear to make sure they're safe. Do you have an idea of how many people were inside that building? I do not. Are you guys wearing any kind of special gear considering the gases at play and the so we're currently wearing just our normal bunker gear with um, with our SCBAs, which is respiratory protection. Like I said, when they come out, they get they get deconned. Uh, what, any idea of what uh, caused this battery to catch fire? They do not know. Okay. Still under investigation. Do you mind describing a little bit about what the inside the building looks like and what the, the situation is in there right now? It is just a, it's a large open warehouse inside. They have a couple lifts that lift these batteries. These batteries are extremely um, heavy. So we're told that they're 20,000 pounds plus, um, and it's just a large open warehouse with a crane that will lift these batteries. Uh, no, ma'am, I don't. Has it been like a steady flame? Has there been anything? Because you mentioned the gas is so explosive. Has it exploded at all? Yes, sir. It's just steadily burning. That's all it's doing, and off-gassing. A lot of smoke inside? Uh, there's a good amount of smoke inside. Can you talk a little bit about the challenge of a battery fire uh, and how it's different than a structural type of fire so these batteries whether it's the lithium iron phosphate or the lithium ion batteries they're small cells they're packed together real tight so what happens is once you get thermal runaway with one battery then it impacts all the other batteries and compromises them so it is not anything that you can put out with just putting a lot of water on it the recommendation is to actually put it in a dump tank and submerge it but of course, you know, your electric vehicles, this type of battery and all that, they don't have anything like that to uh, be able to facilitate that type of uh, In 2019, action. we reported another fire at this facility. And in that case, the employees had to be like sprayed down uh, like a chemical bath or something like that. Is that something that had to happen this time? It's, it's just a standard decon, sir. That's all it is. Uh, the battery like fueling its own fire then? Yes, sir. That's exactly what it is. Once one battery gets going, Right, it, it just heats up the battery next to it and around it. They're all packed in a tight, they're all packed tightly together. So if you could imagine a bunch of double A batteries packed in a five by five container that's two foot deep and the multiple layers of that, how many of those batteries, that's exactly what you have burning inside there. Uh, any idea, you said hours, this is likely gonna continue to burn. Any idea of how many hours? No, sir, uh, very extended length of time. Um, and, and I assume JFRD is like trained, 
you have training for this type of, of chemical fire specifically? Uh, can you talk a little bit about what, what is this the standard protocol you guys are following, or is this like a bring out well, we train for electrical vehicles and the hydrogen ion and all of that. So, I mean, we're just following our standard hazmat protocol. Yes, sir, the building's evacuated. Yes, sir, the building's evacuated. Absolutely, sir. Yes, sir. And they will not be allowed to go back in there until it's absolutely clear of... Um, any of the toxic gases that are in there. And the last question for me and for you or the chief, uh, as far as this meeting that's going to happen, uh, about the, the planning meeting, um, uh, what's that going to involve? And then, like, what, what comes next year? So it will involve engineers from SAFT. It'll involve our, our command staff. And we'll, uh, we'll work with their engineers to figure out what we need to do next to make sure that uh, we're safely taking care of and mitigating this situation. Well, all that belongs to JFRD. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Thank you all very much. And one last yeah, thing yeah. off camera. How many engine trucks did you guys have? I saw La Villa out here. I we saw got, Brick House. I saw we had uh, 10, 10 engines, seven. We got seven command chiefs out here, two hazmat teams, four ladders, and seven rescues, which equals about 100 JFRD firefighters in all. Any possibility that anything else is going to do something? That's always a possibility in these situations.